Hey guys, this is John, and welcome to another Climbing the Rating Ladder video. I'm playing Arcadia82, a mid-1500s player. They open with d4. And let's go ahead and play knight f6 here on move one. This is a 15 plus 10 game. My opponent plays c4. Okay, so maybe I could go for uh, a King's Indian or a Grunfeld. I'm feeling like a, a Fianchetto of some sort. Let's play g6. And assuming white plays knight c3, now it's decision time if I want to play King's Indian or Grunfeld. I don't play a lot of King's Indian nor Grunfeld. <laughs> so I'm kind of just debating between the two. Uh, you know what? Let's go King's Indian. Why not? We'll allow white to take the space in the center, e4. I'm, I'm more of a classical player. I tend not to like giving central space to my opponent early on in the game. But if you play the King's Indian, which is quite an interesting opening... Um, produces a lot of dynamic battles. You have to be comfortable with giving away central space and counterattacking. And one guy that I know many of you watch who does this very well is Grandmaster Daniel Narditsky, Danya. So if I were trying to study this opening and get better, I would definitely be watching some of his content. So I hope I can do you proud, Danya. <laughs> so... The challenging thing about the King's Indian to me is that there are so many branches that both sides have to be aware of. Okay, there are about a dozen systems white can throw at you that are all, all valid. And for black too, uh, within each major system, they can throw these sub variations back at white of note. So, okay, Bishop E2, this is a playable move. I'm going to castle. Sometimes this is a prelude to a G4 move for white. I don't think white's going to play that this early. I believe they usually play bishop e3 here. They could also play knight f3. That would transpose to the classical variation. But let's see what we get. I'm happy to just play some standard moves and see what comes. I wouldn't recommend openings like the King's Indian with an early Fianchetto and the lack of space to new players. If just to throw a rating out there, if you're below about 1200 on chess.com, I personally wouldn't contemplate an opening like this. It's kind of advanced. Again, you got to learn how to play with the lack of space. Okay, here white goes. White does play h4, so some early aggression. I could try to play h5 and counter on the king side, just put a stop to the h5 advance for white. But I know from experience that counterattacking in the center against a flank pawn advance is often the correct formula. So I'm thinking about e5 or c5 here, two typical moves in the King's Indian. And I might I might slightly lean towards c5 in this exact position. I kind of like that. If d5, maybe I play e6, try to take this into Benoni territory. Let's go for it. So e5 was an alternative there, but assuming white goes d5, which is often how they meet this pawn advance, I'm going to try to play e6 and, and chip away at the center. Not fearing h5 too much, because I, I know I'm going to have some play in the center, maybe sticking a rook on e8 opposite the white king. White seems a little hesitant with their time management. I mean, we both paused a little bit. I don't get the sense that white is 100% prepared in this line. Like, I think bishop e2, they probably played this before. Maybe they're remembering some ideas but I don't get the sense I'm walking straight into my opponent's preparation. Thanks again to everyone for tuning in lately. I've been posting a lot of long-form content, standard games, climbing the rating ladder, ladder games, uh, longer videos. I'm really happy to say the last watch time on that standard video I just posted was over 25 minutes, which I think is amazing uh, in this day and age. So thanks to you guys for tuning in, and uh, I'm glad you appreciate and learn from the longer content. I really want to say that because I know we have the tiktok of vacation of society going on, especially among the younger generation. Uh, and, you know, I'm not going to make any judgments about that right now, but it's nice to know that people still watch the longer stuff, especially of the educational variety. So, okay, E takes D5. White did play h5. My plan was to take anyway, so I'm going to ignore this. I'm not going to take on h5. I do not want white to um, gain a free shot at my structure in case of some capture there. Kind of fractures my, my h and, and f pawns, disconnects them. So let's try to take it to white in the center. 
Maybe white will try to sneak in h6, but I can tuck the bishop back on h8. I think that would be fine. And again, watch for this rook to come to e8. I really want my rook standing opposite the white king on e1. So some aggressive pawn play. I know this is 2023 and the engines have largely approved of flank pawn attacks, but white is taking some liberties with their development and their potential king safety. So I hope to create some problems for white. That being said, I mean, we can't underestimate white's grip that they may obtain with their pawns if we don't hurry to create the, the counterplay. Okay, knight takes d5. First thing I notice about this move is it leaves this pawn undefended. Okay, so this is a nice outpost, but what happens if I take on e4? Because that pawn, to me, looks ripe for the taking. It opens my king's Indian bishop. Maybe I have moves like queen a5 coming as well. I kind of sense that white did not see that. Let's try to anticipate how white's going to play in reply. Assuming there's a trade on g6 and I take with my h-pawn, that does lead to this half-open file, or fully open file, I should say. There's bishop h6, but I don't greatly fear that. I don't think that should be um, anything devastating to my king's safety. For instance, I could take and then play queen g5, hit the rook, hit the pawn. Uh, maybe I got to watch knight c7 in some cases, but largely that looks okay. It's also possible I may take with the f pawn. That does slightly expose me here. That would be my only misgiving about that, but I think it's a possibility. What else is white realistically doing here? I mean, bishop f3, rook e8, I think should be fine. This knight is, is annoying. I am foregoing the possibility of taking it, but that's a juicy central pawn. I would like to capture that. I don't see anything specifically wrong with this. So yeah, let, let's go for it. Let's see what white has in mind. I'm covering these squares too. We've got to watch knight c7 in a lot of lines, but once this knight comes to, let's say, c6, I should be in business. It is interesting which way to take after h takes g6. I'm, I'm kind of torn. Kind of torn. I mean, taking with the f-pawn on the one hand is nice because I get knight takes f2 as a threat with my rook participating down the file. But h takes is a little more compact. Like, strangely enough, I think h takes actually keeps my king a little safer than f takes because it doesn't weaken me here. But then is that a big deal because... The square white would like to go to is, is blocked by their knight, so I don't know. I'm going to think about that a little more while white is pondering. Yeah, I mean, other attempts by white to kick my knight, like let's say f3, I have knight g3. I already mentioned if the bishop comes here, rook e8. Probably same if the queen comes here. I think rook e8 is just... Quite a handy move in almost every circumstance. There's also bishop f5 perhaps coming in in some situations. I got to be mindful of g4, but it's possible I could make use of some ideas like that. I still do think this is most likely. And I, I probably won't throw the check in just because bishop d2, and even though we could swap down on this square, white could throw in a check at the end of the line, or actually worse, they might even have checkmate, knight e7, king h8, rook takes h7. So I will be capturing back. White does play that. Okay, so white used almost two minutes to play that move. I would like to have my move already prepared, but I'm still debating even as we speak. Hmm. Let's say I take with the f pawn and then knight f4 is played, looking for queen d5. And I do have that queen a5 check move. I also see bishop d4 coming in. Maybe that's that's a good move to block the attack in some way. Looks kind of nice. But the game will get sharper, that's for sure. F takes. I don't know, though. If I can quickly use the d4 square, this might actually be a pretty good bargain. 
some scenario like this. I mean, what if also knight f3, white, white simply develops? So f takes g3, knight f3. Probably the check on a5, or maybe knight c6 first. Knight c6 looks a little more logical. I'm not that fearful of white castling, I don't think. Castling uh, kingside. So it seems to me white would have to somehow organize castling long to really give me problems. Yeah, this is a close call. I, I think I'm going to go with the f-pawn. But it's undeniably a close call. Yeah, let's go with the f-pawn capture. We'll see how white reacts to that. But I'm not doing this lightly. You know, if, if there was any hint of queen d5, I would never be capturing this way. It's just the fact that the knight blocks that square. And I don't see how white can effectively move this knight with enough of a counter threat that I wouldn't be able to respond to it or be able to cover the d5 square. So the main thing I like about this move, f takes g6, is that I open the rook. I have an immediate threat here. May still put the rook on e8, but suddenly my rook is looking pretty good on its f8 square. Okay, knight f3 played. I think that's a sensible move. So do I want to throw in this check? When b4 is on the table, takes knight e7, maybe not. It's kind of messy. I mean, king here, knight takes g6 is possible. I, I do feel more secure if I throw this in first. So I think I probably will play knight c6. Yeah, I think knight c6 is a good move here. And any other things I need to worry about, like white's knight jumping somewhere, trying to get queen d5 in? I don't think so. I think I can always cover if needed. Yeah, checks out. So let's do it. Knight c6. Influence some squares here. Pieces into the action I'm up upon. Nice to be up material. Even if it's just a pawn, one pawn can win you the game. At this rating level, by the way, mid-1500s, I tend to think players are pretty tough on chess.com. They tend to be pretty tactically sound. Um, it's not that they won't make blunders because no one stops blundering, even up to my level and beyond. But you can expect more elements of strategy to start being pulled in. To beat players at this level, it may not be enough to simply play solid. You may have to actively outplay them at some point. So if you play a little too passive, even if you're not blundering... These players can work you. Trust me. So I think we're getting into the rating level here where, in my mind, a player at this rating like represents a more complete player. They still have gaps, but they're not as glaring as, uh, let's say, 12, 1300. Uh, sorry to those of you out there at those rating levels, but <laughs> the consistency here is, is starting to show. Okay, so time-wise, I'm doing okay. I've got two extra minutes. I'm playing an unfamiliar opening for me from the black side. Um, of the Kings Indians I've played in my life, 99% of my experience is on the white side. <laughs> I think it's, that's safe to say. I think I did try it, now that I think about it. When I was coming up through the ranks playing tournament chess, I think when I was around 16, 1700 US Chess Federation rating, I think I did try it a little bit. Ooh, Rook H4, okay. Instantly, a tactic hits my head here. Um, I, I maybe should have me mentioned this. Knight takes f2. Idea, king takes f2, queen takes h4 check with this knight being pinned. Okay, it looks juicy, right? It looks very tempting. The only issue I have with this, this, is, this could be kind of weird. If white moves their queen instead of taking, taking the knight, what am I actually doing? How do I get the knight out? But, oh boy. I mean, would this be a Danya-approved move? I, I kind of think he, he would see this in an instant. And, I mean, I'm tempted to play it uh, for the shock value, if anything else. But this is, a, this is a long game. In a bullet game, I would have played this by now, maybe even in a blitz game. But let's actually think if white doesn't take the knight, which has got to be criti critical. If they don't take the knight, what am I actually doing? 
Because how do I get that knight out? I mean, maybe I double down and play knight d4. That's probably the way. Kind of depends where the queen goes too, right? Like if queen c2, maybe I have time for bishop f5. Hit the queen with tempo. We like it. We like that. But what about uh, queen d2? Let's say queen d2. Kind of an awkward looking move. And funnily enough, white is not threatening king takes f2, so maybe I have time for knight d4 there. Threatening to remove the defender of that rook. You know, when, when I've seen king's Indian games go well from the black side, there's this sense of inertia that black has. It's kind of one of these openings that starts slowly. Black fiend kettoing, sitting back with their pawns. But once you get going, you can really hammer your opponents. And I feel this way about lines like the hedgehog as well. If you guys have watched my hedgehog video... It's kind of similar. There's this pent-up energy that can get released. And, oh, it's so hard not to look at knight takes f2 here. Gotta be the critical move in this position. I think queen d2, knight d4 should work well for me. I mean, there's even bishop d4 if I really want to try to rescue that piece. But then you get into rook takes d4 territory. So, preliminarily, I think knight d4 is the move there. Um, what else is there to think about? What else is there to concern ourselves with? Knight takes f2, queen d2, knight d4. I mean, queen g5. I don't quite believe queen g5, although it's interesting. Yeah, I think I'll have resources against that. Hmm. Trade, queens, bishop takes. My knight is still trapped. Ah, but then I can get out via g4. Wait a second. I can just get out via g4 at all times, right? Sorry if that was obvious to you and you're screaming that through the screen. Okay, that makes me feel even better about this decision because I can get out through g4 because my bishop is guarding the square. For some reason, I thought the rook was sufficiently monitoring both squares. But John, you have a bishop sitting on c8. Sorry, Daniel, you would have seen that immediately. I, I kind of failed you. I'm spending multiple minutes here. But yeah, I think let's go for it. I think if here, bishop g5, I'm taking d1, take here. That's not going to work out that well for white. I think we have the green light to play this at this point. trying to give myself permission. Let's do it. It's a critical move. I spent almost four minutes on that move. You guys can't quite see it because it's blocked my webcam, but um, that does seem critical. I don't see a line that's problematic here yet. And again, main idea is if king takes f2, I can take this rook due to the pin, due to the knight on f3 being pinned. Took me an embarrassingly long time to see knight g4. You know, sometimes you just <laughs> don't see resources like that. And interestingly, I only saw the knight g4 move when I was contemplating some more complicated variation like this. <laughs> but now that I have this insurance policy of being able to go here at the drop of a hat, that was what pushed me over the edge. Yeah, if not for knight takes f2, I probably would have had to. Uh, either play knight f6, queen a5 maybe, or something like rook e8, defending the knight. This should be very strong. I mean, I'd be surprised if white had a good counter to this. Looks like white's scrambling to try to try to mitigate the damage. I, I think... Knight takes f2 took, took them by surprise. I don't think you play rook h4 if you've seen knight takes f2. So white would have to have a real strong counter here for this not to be good. Still keeping our guard up, though. Even more so because the position's kind of erratic. It's a bit messy. I'm still thinking of ways if white moves this knight that they could cause problems. Like, you know, white has a check here. Even though white's queen's under attack, if they could check and then play queen d5 and you know, somehow create, create issues for my king, but realistically, it's just not going to happen.
White could pop the queen over here, but it seems so distant from the action. I don't think that's going to cause issues. Again, I can just retreat this knight if I want. Uh, actually, if queen b3, maybe knight d4 becomes especially good because that would hit the queen and the knight sitting here, which is defending that rook on d4. So that's a nice counter there. So white's in the tank now. I mean, I understand thinking for a while here because they're already down one pawn, and this just made it a second pawn. So if white's thinking in terms of trying to generate the most counterplay and justify being down two pawns, they're looking hard trying to find a move here. Okay, queen c2. So I mentioned I have bishop f5 against this, but there's also the knight d4 move, which might just be better. Right? Because... Knight d4, kind of like the queen going to b3. It hits that and the defender of the rook. And I love that this comes with tempo. Love, love, love that. Bishop f5, super tempting as well. But knight d4 might even be better. I think on knight d4, probably white has to sack the exchange. Rook takes d4. Now, unfortunately, I can't take with the pawn because that does run into king takes. Unless I have a check on h4, I don't quite buy it, though. So if if um, knight d4, rook takes, bishop takes, what's going on there? I'm rescuing my, my piece. Maybe bishop g5 is a little problematic. Is that an issue? Bishop g5. I can play, let's say, queen d7 there. A bit of a weird position. I don't know. Okay, what other moves could I consider here? Uh, there's there's the bishop f5 move I've mentioned before. Then I can get my knight out through e4 probably without an issue. So I think I'm debating between doing that and the attractive but potentially complicated knight d4. Ah, another option. Okay, rook takes f3. Wow, I'm missing a lot this game. Even in the queen d2 variation, I should have considered this. Rook takes f3 should be an auto consideration, John. That removes the defender of the rook. So that looks pretty nice. Only thing is, in this variation, there is queen takes f2 at the end of the line. Okay, so white can try to establish... Um, at least in terms of that sequence, material equality. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of options here. These all look pretty decent, but I can only choose one. <laughs> if I play bishop f5, though, I won't have rook takes f3 anymore. That is an important distinction. So rook takes f3, bishop takes f3, uh, queen takes h4, queen takes f2. That's probably okay, like trading down, but I kind of feel like I'm leaving some advantage on the table. White keeps this strong knight on d5. They might have a little bit of compensation there for the two pawns. Like, not probably enough, but a little bit. I mean, what if I get really fancy and try to combine these ideas? Nah, that probably won't work. I was thinking like this and then here. Probably not the greatest. I think I might go bishop f5 when all is said and done. I'm getting down to four minutes. Looks like a pretty good move. Yeah, it keeps a lot of ideas still on the table. Uh, gains the tempo. Let's do it. Bishop f5. But for me, it's, it's a little hard to parse through all the complications here, despite having a very strong feeling that I'm close to winning in this position. But it took a while for me to see ideas like knight g4 and also rook takes f3. Because in that hypothetical queen d2, like that was, <laughs> that was probably a knockout move or close to it. I mean, it was kind of similar to the other one. Could even transpose. So I'll be curious what the engine thinks. If not a knockout move, like at least a good move to get to a two pawn up position. 
But since white put the queen here, I'll go for the bishop f5 reply. And I think the best move might be queen d2 again, strangely enough. And I can play knight e4. There's knight g4. There's maybe knight d4. <laughs> I don't know if I want to tempt fate with knight d4. There's bishop e4. <laughs> queen d2, bishop e4. Again, trying to play off of this. Lots of possibilities. But white is the one who's going to have to make that determination. Yeah, queen d2, knight d4. Looks pretty nice now that I look at that, that more, but... Rook takes d4... Let's say I take with the bishop. Bishop takes d4, knight takes d4, c takes d4, king takes f2. I might not have like a great discovery there, an absolutely devastating discovery. But queen d2, I know I can play knight e4 if I need to. Or the knight g4 move. There's knight e5 as well if I really want to try to get at this. Ooh, bishop g5, counterattack. Okay, that really wasn't on my radar. It's interesting. Interesting. But does it lose a piece? So if I take here now, I make the first capture, first blood. Knight takes g5, bishop takes c2. Then my rook will actually defend here, and I'm still defending the e7 square with this knight. Getting a little messy, but... Uh, White is investing material at that point. So I think I can play queen takes g5 in this position. There's also a check here, I should point out, although white could block. There's even b4. There's getting to be quite a few things hanging in this position. But yeah, I think white's main idea is if I take the queen straight away, they take here. I take their bishop back, they take here at the end. And again, that still looks good. I could swipe this pawn down on b2, but if I can win a piece with this, I like that even better. So I'm thinking queen takes g5. I mean, realistically, what is white going to do there? Got all their checks covered. So I think knight takes g5 will be played. I'll take here. Rook defends the knight. I got e7 covered, so there's no mate. h7 would hang, but I actually don't think I care about h7. So I think this is good. Let's go for it. I don't get positions like this out of my Slav defense too often. <laughs> but I know this appeals to many of you guys. I personally have never liked um, tons of tactical complications, confusion on the board, but that's why chess is a great game because you can play in a style that works um, and that you like. I mean, there's styles for everyone in this game. Like there is no one universally good style. You can be an aggressive player and make that work. You can be a strategic player, play end games and make that work too. The best players are able to play almost any type of position, but um, you can definitely, you know, paint the canvas of the chessboard to your liking. Yeah, I think white must play knight takes g5. I just don't really see too many good alternatives. If white moves the queen. Maybe this knight is still an issue, but I see moves like queen g3. I just don't think, tactically speaking, it's going to work out for, uh, well for white. That queen coming up here is actually pretty nice. Setting up discovered attacks on the king, defends the knight. So looking at this here, here, my king is a little open. I'm not going to lie, but it's, just, it's key that there's no knight e7. Knight e7 I would lose, because if white could play knight e7 successfully, the knight on g5 would guard f7. I'd be forced to play king h8, and then rook takes h7 would be checkmate. So it's close, but 
my knight does cover. And I mean, I vaguely looked at knight e6 at that point. Knight takes g5, bishop takes c2, knight e6. I'm kind of trusting that being up a full piece and two pawns with the move, with no mate in sight or even close to a mate for white, is, is going to be good for me. Yeah, there's multiple things hanging. I see I can take b2. Maybe that would be a good move. Yeah, white takes there, so let's go ahead and take back. I do predict this move will be played. Maybe rook c1 or something instead. Um, don't think there's any like defensive move white can play to cover here and try to win the knight, because I'm, I'm escaping through d3 at all times if I want. Not to mention the bishop takes b2 idea. White's rook on a1 is rapidly running out of squares. So just kind of th thinking about what I would play in response to this. One thing is if I play rook e8, then knight c7 will fork the rooks. Also, I'd be taking my rook off the defense here. So probably on this, I will play a counterattacking move. Bishop takes b2. Okay, white goes knight takes h7, though. Yeah, maybe that is logical as well, because that hits the rook, which is in turn defending here. But I don't know. I, I like this as a reply. Bishop takes b2. It looks nice to me. Kind of makes some room for my king. If knight takes f8, I can calmly recapture. Still defending that knight. And that rook on a1 is going to fall. That rook's a goner. So I'm just thinking about any ways white could sabotage this plan, but I'm not really seeing it. Got enough time here remaining. I can pause for a second. Still got e7 covered. f6 is even covered from afar, thanks to the bishop and the rook. So the plan is this. Bishop takes b2, knight takes f8, rook takes f8. At that moment, I have uh, two minor pieces for the rook, and I think I'm winning their rook. Yeah, don't see a good reply for white. They can get maybe one minor piece like king d2 or something. But that's going to be the extent of it. I should be up a minor piece when the dust settles. Let's go for it. Nice bishops here. It's a good little pattern controlling all those squares on the first rank that the rook would otherwise like to go to. White under a minute here. Yeah, I don't see a good option for white at this stage. And this knight has lived for the last uh, five moves throughout these complications. It's still on the board. White's getting that unpleasant rattling sound <laughs> when you're getting low, that rattlesnake noise. Okay, knight f6. Could take that. Uh, either way, really. I mean, taking with the rook actually looks pretty good because after all this, I'm forking the two rooks, funnily enough. So I think I'm going to do that. Let's do that one. The lack of coordination between the rooks is is pretty compelling here offensively. It's just no way for white to even get an exchange for one of those. Like uh, They could take here, I suppose, but the rook can't even come over to defend the other rook and then recapture. I'm going to be up, be up too, too many minor pieces here. I'm going to be up two minor pieces clean, I think. White's ticking down here. Probably going to lose on the clock. Yes, the position is lost, though. Let's tell my opponent thanks for the game. Yeah, interesting one um, at the outset. I do think this probably was far less close than I initially thought with the knight takes f2 decision, but my brain was a little slu sluggish. Maybe looking at this opening from the black side, not being too familiar with how some of these tactics go down. I wouldn't say this is a common tactic in the King's Indian. <laughs> black castled king side, attacking down the f-file when white, white's king is still in the center. It's not, you know utterly, utterly standard as far as my knowledge. But 
this looks a lot less close than it seemed to me in the game because, again, queen d2, it just took me pretty long to see that I actually have rook takes f3, queen takes h4, among other things. You know, among other options like knight g4 as well or the whole knight d4 stuff. So before we click to the analysis, I just think white's opening strategy was too optimistic. Maybe you can get away with h5, but I think here you got to take with one of these pawns. I'd probably take with the e-pawn personally. And then after rook e8, uh, white will have to balance this kingside attack they're attempting to get off the ground with their king being in the center and their need to develop soon. But we have some Benoni-like play. I mean, this is curious what the engine will say. Probably knight takes d5 is when things really start to go astray for white because I don't see the compensation after knight takes e4. I think this is just going to be clearly better for black unless I'm missing something or misassessing this. And as far as my decisions, I don't have a lot of regrets. I think the way the, the tactics went down was in my favor. Maybe I could have played a couple things in the opening differently. You know, I was debating e5 versus c5. Uh, maybe the engine will say this Benoni treatment, going e6, trying to attack here, is not the best. But on the whole, I feel pretty good about that game. So let's take a look at the game review. Thanks to everyone who watches the analysis. Analysis gang, I appreciate you guys. Okay, so I got a pretty clean bill of health here. 96.8% accuracy to 77.2. Yeah, so King's Indian defense. Black is Fian Kedoing, the King side bishop. If you play the Pierce, Pierce, uh, then there's some shades of that. It's just the difference is white C pawn is up on C4 with the knight behind it. The so-called good marriage versus the potentially bad marriage with the C-pawn on C2 and the knight on C3. That's, that's Pierce style. Doesn't mean that that's a bad opening for white by any means. It just plays a little differently. So D6. You can also castle here if you want because E5 is, is probably not the best line for white. But D6 makes total sense. It's consistent with black's play. Yeah, so lots and lots of lines here. I mean, we're talking... I, I just threw out the number a dozen different systems. I haven't counted them, so um, beats me how many there actually are. But there's the four pawns attack. There's knight f3. This is the classical. There's the same-ish with, with f3 here. Um, yeah, there's lines like bishop e2 as white played in the game. There's systems involving an early h3. There's really a lot. And in counter to that, black has a lot of systems too. Oh, and we're not even talking about some of the systems where white doesn't put a pawn on e4. There are lines where white plays g3. goes for more of a Catalan-style approach. Huge body of theory from uh, this position as well. The Enketo system. So if you're thinking about playing this opening from the black side, you should really know what you're doing. And again, I, will, I personally wouldn't recommend it to anyone below about 1,200. If it interests you, great. But uh, prepare to have to play cramped positions and potentially be confused in the opening unless you really specifically know what you're doing. <laughs> so, okay, let's click into the opening book because this is a variation. Bishop E2, we can see here. Let me shrink my cam. Yeah, we can see here knight F3 is most popular. That transposes to the classical where black usually plays E5 at this point. It's a topic maybe for another video. I played that many times from the white side actually on my channel. Um, yeah, so here, bishop g5 and bishop e3 most common. Bishop g5, this actually hinders black's ability to play e5. Because if black does this, um, I thought it's the case white can go d takes e5, trade queens, and then play knight, knight d5. Is that not the case? Let's just see here. Yeah, my, my understanding is that this is actually good for white if this happens because of the pin and the attack here. So maybe not the only approach, but I think that's the point of bishop g5 is it actually hinders this. So that is the main weapon for white at this stage. Uh, bishop e3 also. And I, I have seen games where white sets up the bishops this way and then plays like g4, h4, tries to start creeping forward and keeps the knight back. Bishop e3 also influences the c5 square a little bit, so maybe black doesn't want to go there. Looks like black plays e5 most often. Interesting, and then knight f3, not d5, but then knight f3. Oh, and this is also transposing to a, a classical variation, this Gligerich system, I guess it's still being called, but very interesting. 
yeah, I mean, you can just see, like, look at this juncture. Uh, 1,500 games in the chess.com database from here. Yeah, E5 is most popular, but there's a not insignificant number of games with other moves, too. And that's why this opening is a tough opening. It's one of the D4 defenses where, in my opinion, there are the most branches and the most confusing play. Okay, so White played this H4 move. This has been played in 146 games. Hard to read too much into the stats. I mean, the stats look pretty even here. Um, I don't think this is a mistake by any means. It does seem like C5 is pretty consistent. That is the top move here. Let's just take a peek, see what the engine likes. Also mentions H6. Okay, so if H6, you can meet this with G5 in some cases. It's always hard to know if you should play H6 or H5. That can be a subtle decision. Wasn't really feeling H5. Looks like in the database that gets, that gets played a little bit. But I felt more like counterattacking in the center. So I went for this. Yep, D5 played. Makes sense. And E6. Okay, so I am feeling a little validated here that there are plenty of master games where this was featured. And hey, lo and behold, white plays H5 most often here. So that is apparently still acceptable. He takes D5. Now at this point in the database... White has never taken with the knight. And I believe these are all master games. So white has never taken with the knight. And my opponent took with the knight here. That gets the, ooh, the dreaded double question mark from chess.com. Yeah, so it just doesn't seem like the best. What's it suggesting here? H6, C takes D5, E takes D5. No real consensus. These are all fairly close. And the engine's still kind of changing its mind. But let's say H6, first of all. That might be the most principled move. Yeah, White has staked out some territory here, but this looks pretty typical, like a Benoni. Yeah, B5 starting to break out. Again, if you play Kings Indian, you got to be okay with playing less space, playing with less space. So this is a nice little idea. If White takes with the Knight, Black takes on E4, kind of like the game. If Bishop takes, I bet Knight takes E4 is again going to be the move. Let's see. Yeah, Knight takes E4, looking to deflect the Knight so we get Queen A5 check-in. Fork the king and the bishop. And even if this, we would part with the dark square bishop, the king's Indian bishop, but take here. And despite the dark squares around black's king being weak, the light squares around white's king are even weaker. <laughs> Rook e8 coming in. Queen's guarding this square. Looks like the engine favors black here. So some interesting stuff already possible. It's probably the case white should just take on d5 with one of the pawns. Yeah, let's say c takes d5 here. I probably would have played rook e8. Let's say h6, bishop here, queen c2, just kind of spitballing here based on the engine's top lines. I mean, this is a complicated play. This is Benoni, Benoni-ish play. Um, I'm definitely out of my depth here, but I would have played on general principles. Probably felt good about the fact that my king is safe for now, but there's a lot of instances where this pawn could be handy. White wants to stabilize and try to cramp black with these pawns in the middle game. But a complicated battle ahead for sure. There's also e-pawn takes. Maybe would be similar. Like I have a feeling I'd play rook e8 here again. Yeah, I think king f1 could make sense. Stepping off the file. It seems to like me taking here. I wonder just because maybe I like play the bishop back here and although it fractures things, I don't have to worry about like g4 as much. Yeah. This also looks complicated complicated chances for both sides i know that might be a lazy assessment but this is just the tip of the iceberg um, in a position like this but white took with the knight and it does look like knight takes e4 white's going to struggle for compensation the engine's suggesting king f1 at this point bishop f3 kind of calm moves let's see on h takes if it approves of the way i took it does okay so if i take with the h pawn Gives an edge for black, but it's not as large of an edge. I think the game probably would gravitate more towards the center of the board here. So it does like F takes, opening the rook in the process. Yeah, and it probably is the case. Um, white can stabilize this if they play well. Bishop F3, maybe trying to come through here. Yeah, knight G5. And that's an interesting one. So take, ah, I can allow this because I have queen E7. Mm hmm. Yeah, come back and 
Bork the King and the Knight. Maybe not technically the end of the story because White has a check on d5. But it looks like even after King h8, I'm safe enough, despite it looking a little scary. Interesting. Okay, so f takes. White did play Knight f3. Um, I developed here Knight c6. This seemed correct. I like the influence it gave me on these squares, the ability to play Knight d4. Ooh, and Rook h4 gets the other double question mark. The dreaded double question mark. Yeah, and it did take me a long time to kind of put put everything together. I saw knight takes f2 fast, but I'm a little disappointed in myself that I didn't see... I think this is a bit of a generous double exclamation point. I'm a little disappointed that I didn't see the details as quickly. Because really, like, rook takes f3, knight g4, I should have seen that stuff fast. And I would bet many of you in the comments saw it before I did. But yeah, this is minus 4. I think I mentioned bishop g5. We could have some simplification like this. There were similar lines later. I mean, even if I take here, I got to be much, much better. Up two pawns, bishop pair. White is a nice knight on d5. My king is slightly open, but that's, that's not enough for white to compensate. So again, if king takes f2, the crux of this idea is that I can take with check, and white's knight is pinned. This move is illegal. So on queen d2, what is best here? Rook takes f3 is best, and it's not even close. Minus 7. So how does that go? So if take, throw in knight d3. Uh-huh. Not queen takes h4 because a queen takes f2. Throw this in, then take, and black is having a field day, according to the engine. Not even close. King d1, queen h1. I guess white's going to feel the wrath of my bishops, and the knight may be jumping in. If the king goes here, the knight can come in. Along with the bishop. This bishop might make an appearance on h6 if white goes king d2. Yeah, I can see how this is overwhelming. Knight d3, that's a nice one. Being able to take there with check. So it was kind of what I suspected, that this is not particularly close. And I maybe stressed a little more than I had to, but then again, I was slow to see some of this stuff, like rook takes f3. So i got to watch more Danya vids, especially in the king's Indian. <laughs> So queen c2, now I kind of hemmed and hawed here, and I played bishop f5. Seems like there's multiple good moves. This would actually transpose to the other line, wouldn't it, that we just looked at? So maybe this is technically the best line. Yeah, it didn't occur to me how fast like my minor pieces are coming into the play when I'm doing the, this with check, and white can't block with the queen. So rook takes f3 looks real good. Yeah, that rook is undefended. But okay, bishop f5. White responded with that. I was kind of curious what to do against this. Looks like it's advocating for knight e4 or knight g4. Yeah, probably would have played one of those moves, especially this one. Looks nice. But some more pieces remain on board. White goes full circle and plays the queen to d1 here, I guess. Knight d4, yeah, I'm swarming here, threatening to remove the defender. Go after this. That's nasty. But white played queen g5 in a good little in-between move situation here where I'm taking, this is like a desperado idea. I'm trying to get the, the maximum amount of material for my queen before I take white's queen. Yeah, we take here. And the key thing was that this rook was covering the knight. And unfortunately for white, they don't have 97. If they could play 97 here, you can see I only have two legal moves. Uh, fortunately, I'm not obliged to play king h8 because that would get mated. Um, I can take here. So just... Had to pay attention to that detail. This is a good moment to spend some time. The position's complicated. There's a lot of tactics flying around the board. Look at the forcing moves. Try to keep the material balance in mind at all times. And use that as your guide. Material balance and relative king safety probably as well. Yeah, and this is just too much. Even though it looks messy still, it's too much. Probably many, many good moves here. I played one. Bishop takes b2. I was expecting knight takes f8, but... uh. I think on knight takes f8, I would have just played rook takes f8. Yep, hold this, and I think the best case scenario for white would be if they were down one minor piece and a pawn or, or two. It's probably going to be a minor piece and a pawn, like let's say here, bishop takes, bishop takes, something like this, but black has three minor pieces, white only has two, black also has two extra pawns. Yep, and this was nice. Could take with the rook or the bishop. I just like this fork I get. This seemed real clean. 
And again, multiple minor pieces going to be up here in the end. This is just a hypothetical continuation. Okay, so um, yeah, I think uh, my assessment before clicking on the engine and looking at the review, which I would recommend, by the way, try to draw some, some of your own conclusions before looking at the analysis. I think my assessment was pretty spot on. Reasonable line for white. Seems like a uh, demanding line. Could be interesting if you know exactly what you're doing. But knight takes d5 was not it. Uh, white had to play one of the pawn captures or h6, stabilize things. Some interesting tactics after that, but largely it looked like one-way traffic, especially after white played rook h4. But some good good calculation practice in this one. Hopefully that was useful for you King, your King's Indian players out there. All right, so thanks everyone for tuning in. This was Climbing the Rating Ladder. Let me know if you have any comments or feedback. Let me know if you uh, calculated well or feel you calculated well as you followed along with me. And I'll see you guys again in another video shortly. Bye, guys.